Well, good morning. It's May 1st. <clears throat> it's a Saturday. And I'm uh, just wanting to just share my heart on a few uh, things. And today, what I have on my mind is i um, been studying through the whole Bible. Uh, my One of my videos I posted a while back, I was saying that I was starting a, a plan where I'm going to try to read the Bible in 30 days. Well, I'm in 2 Kings right now, but, but one of the things that I've noticed up to this point, reading the Bible um, uh, every day and trying to, to get a lot of it read, is the theme of judgment, the theme of grace comes hand in hand, that God's judgment, but God's grace, and but God's judgment, and that's the way it it happens, and it goes through so far, and I've read the Bible before, I've read it several times, I've, I've studied it very, um, I've studied it deep, you know, for 14 years, but when you look at reading the Bible straight through, and you're reading it, you're, you're doing an overview basically. There's one theme of judgment, grace, judgment, grace, judgment that happens in the Bible. And one thing that I have noticed is that when God gives Israel commands to follow, they are all excited to follow the commands. Then they're not. Then they get into their life. And they, they find out life starts getting in the way of God's of, of being obedient to the Lord. And then God, he already have, he warned them what was going to happen if they go the route that Israel went all the time. You know, uh, worshiping other gods, sacrificing the idols, um, you know, uh, uh, sexual sin, whatnot. You know, so all the different things you know that happened. So then they wanted a they wanted a king. You know, uh, God was not enough to be their king, so they had to have a king. And you see, God allowed them to have what they wanted. That should tell us something. If we're wanting something in our life, and and it's not necessarily what God wants us to have, He'll eventually give it over to us. So then we have. Uh, Israel getting what they want, and they end up turning on God every time. And God will always send a Nathan, a prophet, Elijah, Elisha, um, judges. Even though some of the you know you look at some of the judges and they wasn't what they should have been, he always sent someone to tell them what they were doing wrong. And it was always God speaking to that individual person and then bringing them to repentance. And then they turn right back around and start sinning again, and God judges them. He shows them grace by sending someone out to give them, uh, tell them what they're doing wrong. God's going to do this. They repent. They usually have something happen to them. They hit rock bottom, and then they, they repent. That's the thing. That's been the theme. See, now we're in. I'm in uh, Second Kings, and we've seen that Israel uh, Solomon, uh, King Solomon, started off good and ended bad. Saw so King David started off good, ended bad. You know, he he was broken. He was never the same man after the sin uh, with Bathsheba. He was the never. He he was never the same man from that point forward. God loved him. God saw that he was that he repented of his sin. It took a year to repent. Um, I think it's Psalm 53, um, if I'm mistaken. It's Psalm 51 or Psalm 53. I think it's Psalm 53 that where where David repents over the sin of Bathsheba. Um, but then we see that he was never the same man as he was in the beginning. The zeal he had for God it it changed him. And then we see Solomon come out. And then he was he was on the you know he was on the mark, and then he started he started off looking more like David in the beginning. He started being a godly man, and then he started following into David's footsteps, and then went past David. Whenever you look at what Sol King Solomon did, he ended up looking more like a, the Pharaoh in the in the um, in the Exodus account 
than he did anything else. He didn't even look like a, a follower of, of Yahweh by the end of his reign. He looked at more he looked like a pagan ruler. He treated the people like a pagan ruler, like the Pharaoh treated Israel. And we see judgment, we see curses, we see all these things happen, and it's not from Satan, it's from God. It's always from God. When you look in the Old Testament, we see that God is the one that is punishing Israel, not Satan. In fact, when we do see um, the deceiver show up in the Old Testament writings, he's always um, having permission. He's always getting permission from Yahweh before he does anything. So, um, we see this, this theme of people, they, they chase after God hard, then they start, the world gets in, um, in the middle of their life and they start running away from God. And we hear all these, these, these songs today about, you know, God never leaves them. Well, we see in the Old Testament, God does, he does forsake them. He does. He, he, he brings judgment on that generation, but he doesn't forsake Israel as a whole. And we need to understand that. The people that are, that are rebelling and never turns back to, to, to Yahweh, they end up getting judged and it, it is not pretty. They're not getting judged and going to paradise. They're getting judged and they're getting what they reaped. And that theme never changes. God's grace never has changed from the beginning to, to where we are now. We're in a different covenant, but it doesn't make God different. It doesn't make God's nature different. What it makes is that we're in a different covenant with God. And we are, we are Gentiles in the covenant with Yahweh where he actually divorced, he actually divorced Israel. And it won't be until he receives them back in the, until um, Jesus comes and, or until the, they realize Jesus is the Messiah and they turn to Jesus as the, as the Messiah. That's when they, that's when Israel gets back in right relationship and becomes the bride again. But well, so because in the beginning, that's what you know. He, when he divorce, when you divorce somebody, it's it's a it's a marriage. So we need to really think about that on how we look at our life, and that we think that we can keep on sinning and keep on moving away from God, and there won't be any consequences. It's not the consequences that we think that. We're told in, in, in the institutional church, especially Baptist churches and non-denominational churches that that basically echo um, uh, Baptist doctrine, where you can live any way you want to live. You can you can be in deep dark sin and run away from God, and and He will and and you will go to heaven. It's not about going to heaven. It's about building God's kingdom. It's about being at the feet of Christ. Is that is the that is the the crown that we receive? Excuse me, crown that we receive when we um, when we persevere with the Lord. We stay with the Lord. We remain in Christ. John fifteen. Jesus says, "If you remain in me, I will remain in you." That is the same thing that uh, Yahweh said in. The Old Testament. He told Israel, if you remain in me, I will remain in you. If you abide in me, I'll abide in you. It's the same language. It's the same language. Whenever you look at what, what Yahweh asked of Israel, Jesus is asking the, the Gentile, the church, to, be, to do this same thing. The difference is, is that we are no longer under the law. That means that we are no longer bound to keep 613 laws. We are now under the law of Christ. So, what does that mean? We're under a new covenant. We don't have the covenant that Israel had. But that doesn't mean that we don't have the same um, structure of, 
how we live our life out for God, that we honor our life. We are we honor God in our life. So I don't understand why that is so difficult for us to get. We have a different we have a different um uh, covenant but the but the theme of God is the same. What God hates is the same. God hates um, sin. God hates uh, us living our life and, and devoting our life to, to, to pagan gods. <coughs> Bless me. Sorry. So, when you look at that and you look at what what God has done in, in the Old Testament, nothing changes in the New Testament other than the covenant, that we are no longer bound to the law. But our, our devotion, our life is the same. In fact, it's, it's brought up a notch from the Old Covenant. In the Old Covenant, all we had to do was um, personal salvation did, wasn't really a thing. It was more of a corporate salvation with Israel. You, your family and, and every one of them followed the Lord and they, they devoted their life to the traditions that God set forth to do uh, in the temple and also Yom Kippur, the, the day of atonement, you bring your sacrifice, the priest sacrifices it and everything is good for a year. And then in between that, you basically have a, you basically have a, a system set up for um, salvation as a corporate on a corporate level. Personal salvation falls in that to some degree, but not like what it is now, but we're still a corporate body when it comes to the church, the bride. We are all, he's coming back to get his bride, not just one person, but a collective group that he's coming back to get. The theme never changes on how we live our life. What changes is that we're not bound to the law of Moses, the Mosaic law or the Levitical law. That was to Israel and to Israel alone. So we need to look at this and really see that God's character never changes. He hates sin. If you are practicing sin, great, he gave grace to Israel all the time. He gave grace to Israel all the time. It wasn't that he changed the idea of grace, that it's something different. It, what it is, is that it actually, um, we see grace because of the cross, that Jesus took our punishment. We no longer have to bring a sacrifice to a priest. Jesus is our priest. He sacrificed himself. So with that in mind, we, we have to have that understanding that nothing ever changes. Nothing ever changes when it comes to grace and judgment and practicing of sin. He hates it. You get you are practicing sin. It doesn't mean that you are you're going to go to you're going to go to paradise or you're going to go to heaven because you're um, you know you have this magical prayer. We are still. He still wants us to be obedient to him. And what he what Jesus asked of us, not to the law, but to the law of Christ. So think about that. Think about what. Go back and read the Bible in the in the lens of Jesus, not your, not your tradition, not your tradition. So think about that. God bless and, and, uh, make that a homework assignment. Start reading the Bible all the way through and try to read it faster than what you normally would read and see what the theme is. God bless.